My loved one that I lost was my mum. Uh, I lost her to cancer. She was battling cancer for eight years already. Elisha's was my fiancé. We were supposed to be married on December 2020, but little did we know um, he was called home to the Lord on 6 June 2020. It was through a car accident. He was driving alone that morning and then he hit a lamppost when he suddenly passed away on the spot. I knew Seeds for about 11 years before she passed. She was diagnosed with breast cancer in July 2019. Her condition was rare and she had no like genetic predispositions. I was working from home and um, there were text messages about how she was deteriorating. Um, but I think at the back of my mind, I, it didn't register to me that it could be like her final days, let alone like hours. And I think as more texts came in, um, it became quite apparent that uh, she would be leaving us soon. And so I contacted my boss and asked if I could like reschedule you know, some of my calls. So I uh, moved wherever I needed to. I booked the grab, um, but I actually missed her by about 10 minutes. I lost my brother five years ago uh, through suicide. He was 26 years old at that time and I was 31. I remember rushing into my bedroom because I was going to get ready to meet my family members and I just broke down in my walk-in wardrobe. I just cried really, really hard. Um, it was a grief that I had never known. It was just very overwhelming. He was my dad, uh, father of three of us. He was back in Korea and the rest of us were in Singapore because we were studying and my mom was just with us. There was an accumulation of debt from like multiple times of like cons and scams that he went through and I think he just never could properly swim out of that, of that pile of debt that he was accumulating. So he eventually decided to take his own life and he committed suicide. I miss her a lot. Like, we used to talk every day. I mean, it's been three months that I haven't spoken to her, no more than that, you know, spoken to her properly. Um, there are little details about my life, you know, I wish I could tell her. Actually, I, I can't do that anymore. The hardest part is always birthdays, uh, special occasions like Christmas, New Year, where you are reminded uh, of uh, an absence in the family, just not having one family member around anymore. I find myself like, missing her a lot because she's the first one that I will tell things to last time. Um, so now when I want to tell that, I like, eh, I can tell my dad, I can tell my sister, but like a bit not the same. It's not the same uh, as telling my mum. So that's when I will miss her a lot. During the cremation, I said, see you again. But now I've realised that that line, see you again, was actually the start of my suicidal thoughts because I miss him so much. I thought that the only way for me to see him again was for me to die and go to heaven. So I tried to put myself in dangerous situation. I usually when I was driving, I would just like um, position my car where it's easily um, hit by another car. And then I would just keep on praying to God, God, you know, Please let me just die and bring me to heaven with you. I don't encourage anybody to do the same, but that's what happened to me. It was very, very hard. So I found myself, I think, having like very irritable outbursts. Um, and I would snap at my husband, my poor husband. Um, cognitively, I knew that I was grieving, but I think somatically and you know, like in my heart, I was just like, what's happening? Know, like why am I reacting this way and it took me a lot I think to be able to accept that as well you know that like this is actually the time to grieve I also chose to start going for grief counseling because I wanted to make sense of um, all of the uh, like all of these emotions that I was going through and there was a bit of a sense of shame because it's just a how I don't need to go for counseling like you know I don't know how to handle myself man everybody also seems to be okay um, but uh, I thought that it was beneficial to have a space, I think, to think back about my bond and my friendship like with seeds. And I think on the at the same time it's also for somebody to be able to um, call me out, like you know, or somebody neutral, you know, like to be able to call me out if I'm wallowing or or you know if I'm actually doing okay. I think one of the hardest things about losing my brother 
was that um, in his case, there wasn't any time for us to prepare ourselves. It was a sudden death and uh, there was no chance to say goodbye at all. And at that time, I was also pregnant with my second daughter. And as I was grieving uh, the loss of my brother, one night, God just dropped the name into my mind. Uh, that name was Zoe. And I had to Google that name because I didn't know what it meant. And when I read up uh, on that name, I found that in Greek, Zoe actually means life. And it's not just the physical kind of life that we know it. It actually um, refers to life in a spiritual sense. So I, I was very comforted and I think I was very in awe um, at that time because while I was mourning the loss of my brother, um, God was reminding me through this name that He came to give life. He is a God of life and that despite the death that I had just experienced, I could still have joy because um, of the fact that uh, my brother believed in Jesus and uh, I can see him again. Uh, and I could have joy because of um, the fact that God could turn the bad into good and could redeem uh, that situation for good. I found myself doing a lot of things to distract myself but ultimately I found that at the end of the day when I'm at home alone, uh, lying on my bed, that was when I really missed her a lot. So uh, I think in the end I decided to just go to God and ask Him for His comfort, for His peace. This is verse, 2 Corinthians 6.10. Uh, Paul says, Our hearts ache, and yet there is joy. Yeah, and we are poor, but we can give spiritual riches to others. Yeah, and we have nothing, and yet yeah, we have everything. Joy is simply the privilege of being in the presence of God. So joy is not happiness, like we talk about happiness. And so like, I genuinely believe that you can carry the anguish but still carry joy in life at the same time. Like, they don't have to be in conflict. Throughout of my many attempts of wanting to die, God never take my life. So I thought to myself, okay God, I think you're not gonna take my life anytime soon. But this part, my heart here is still so, so painful. Can you at least do something with it? How can I live on earth with a great pain like this? That was when I made a decision to want to become radically obedient to Him, hoping that He could change my life. I told God I'm willing to accept my portion, so heal me God, help me God. I just want to live. I just want to be able to breathe again. It's very common for people after somebody has uh, someone that passed away, they'll say like, oh, uh, learn to let go, learn to move on. But I think, honestly, letting go, uh, I would say personally, um, letting go is not the best advice to tell them because let go is like telling them to just forget about the loved one, which is not uh, what we want. We want to remember them, we want to be able to celebrate their life, la, like the time spent with them when they're around. Um, if you are close to someone who has lost a loved one, um, don't be afraid to ask them how they are doing. Because it's already a very lonely experience to lose someone close to you and when people don't talk about it, you feel even more alone. If you're close to that person, ask them, um, how are you, how are you feeling? Um, and also show love and care in uh, words, true words and actions. For the longest time, I couldn't tell people that uh, he died by committing suicide. So I just like mumbled some excuse and I said, like, oh, it was an accident, maybe a car accident. And I said, I don't really know. None of my friends actually like probe for any answers. There is a huge strife to be normal, like as if nothing happened. Yeah, and they did that for me, like they let me be who I was, and they patiently waited for me to process it on my own. 
So I guess maybe the first thing I would say is that uh, there is no set pattern for a person's like grieving. And perhaps, you know, like if you would like to offer something, um, one easy way to check if that person's okay to listen would be just to ask and just go, hey, like, um, what? Uh, what would be helpful for you? Like, is it okay if I share a story of my friend who's gone through something similar? Or would you rather I just sit here? And maybe like, given a choice, then it's clearer for both the recipient and for yourself who's wanting to offer and to do something. Uh, hey dad. Uh, it's been like... Eight. More than eight close to nine years since we actually met face to face I really miss you and I know there are so many people here who do too I am uh, very very proud of you for being so brave for fighting for so long and I look forward to seeing you again uh, to be reunited with you in God's presence in the meantime like I'll do my best to live a full life here on earth and 